All right, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to this patch review. Um, so, patch 1.1.4 just came out a few minutes ago. Um, we got like special thanks to whoever, I don't know. Read about that. I'm gonna go straight to the features here. So, um, major new features, this is basically quality of life stuff, a bunch of quality of life stuff, right? So you have like auto loot components, uh, like for components, consumables, crafting materials, etc. Et um, search bars for your stash and your crafting, right? Crafting UI. And also, you have monster HP bars. And all of these options are like, uh, this, this is a toggle and this is a toggle as well. And um, yeah, pretty nice. So basically, that means for people like me who were using Rim. Um, internals just for like a few things like this and this. You can just stop using Grim internals for now. Um, and maybe forever actually, like, depends. We will see. Oh, this is only for ashes and above. Interesting. Um, alright. Slash Star got nerfed a little bit and Shattered Run basically means uh, default attack builds are better because this has like an insane fumble. <clears throat> Alright, uh, also we have like Crucible selection, right? So this means that everyone is gonna be playing Crucible of the Dead, at least those that want to min max Crucible, I guess. And then we got a bunch of art stuff, this is like very nice, new effects for a bunch of abilities, Ignore for as well, that's gonna be a pretty nice for my new character as well. All extras, all right. Also very nice. Uh, PRM as well. Color store, sigil, Trolls sky shard. All right. Seems good. And also bone back rats and rift hounds have new visuals as well. That's pretty nice. And some other stuff. Uh, Really matter that much. Um, veteran of Akiti grants 10% more XP. This will be pretty interesting for new players as well as potentially also for leveling. But I mean, you usually just level on. Uh... Oh my god, why am I clicking this all the time? You just level on um, Elite, anyways, right? Also, you have more XP and difficulty, uh, more experience on Elite now. So, this is gonna be very good for my usual, my usual uh, leveling strategy. So, yeah, it's be very nice. And also, we have like component blueprints. Alright, alright. Oh, these comp generate complete components now. Alright, so you just do it once, and then it's, for example, say, Rimbot to Pause and all those like late game components like Agnembog, Agnembog Leather, right? They're gonna be one click only. That's pretty nice. Um, rune augments, alright. Increase tra travel distance on rush runes and reduce travel distance on teleport runes. Alright, so TP got nerfed yet again. Increase damage, utility, and utility on all of the runes. Alright, so basically this means that the t TP that was like the default that you use on any character that basically has no movement ability and wants a defensive mov movement ability. Um, we will have to take another look at those, but, well, TP is maybe still the best for that, we will see. All legendary seals that deal non-physical damage have their base damage changed to appropriate damage, that's very very nice. Now all of these like non-physical shields are way better. Uh, Renic Annihilation, added 8% energy, cost reduction, removed cunning. Alright, I have to take a look at this, uh, like I don't really know what this skill does to be honest. Bane added 4% OA, 4% attack damage converted to health, removed OA, added attack damage converted to health on escape rock. Alright. Um, wait, which tier are these even? Like, there are so many uh, items or like relics that I've never used. So I actually have to check them up. So, Bane is what? Bane Relic is... oh, that's actually a legendary one. 
should actually check that one out. This is... Well, has like... Hmm. I mean, this doesn't seem that bad now, actually. Maybe. Like, 4% OA and 4% last year on this. Or Fireboats. Might be pretty good, actually. Like, maybe it's... I mean, it still has to compete with Ignafar's Combustion, right? Ignafar's Combustion is very good, but... This might be very good now. I mean, at least be like a contender, I guess. Uh, Annihilation added 8%, and what was this again? Annihilation. Oh my god. So long to load. Drake's Affliction reduced cooldown and increased damage and granted skill. The Forgotten Ghost now has additional percent retail damage added to attack. Um, so what was Annihilation? Oh, the Meteor one. And what does it have now? Energy cost reduction. No, a proc trigger off attacks. Oh, that's nice. This seems very nice for like... Um, well, demo... like sorcerers, right? So like Devastation Sorks. This could be very nice for those type of builds. Actually. But also it has attack speed and custom speed, like maybe, I don't know, maybe you use this on a fire strike character as well. I mean, probably not on a... Is it rather... Because either you use uh, Bane or you use Ignaforce Combustion, right? Remove percent attack and cast speed, well, alright, that kinda shifts around power towards Bane and Annihilation way more than I thought it would. But yeah, Ignaforce was OP OP, right, before, and now that's losing attack and casting speed. Actually kinda huge for some builds, I guess. You have to, like, revamp maybe our Flames of Ignafor build as well. Um, Necrosis. And reduces all non-physical resists by 10%. Wait, what? Necrosis. So instead of minus 18%, all are just minus 10%, I guess. So that's like a nerf to these. Wait, what? Hmm. I don't know if I like that, to be honest. I'm gonna stream this and stop, right? Uh, kinda, yeah. Also, hey, hello and welcome. Also, Lord and Naomi. How are you guys doing? Nemesis increased the AD reduction applied by the pet by 150. Oh, that's nice as well. Shit, there are so many relic changes, like, it's kind of hard to say which are good and which are bad. I mean, this got nerfed, this is worse now, this is way better now, this is w better now, I guess. Not by that much, but... Um... I mean, if you really want me to stream longer, maybe you can talk about it. Uh, that said... Well, what is this? Oblivion? Spammable. Oblivion. What does this spell even do? 15 meter range? Holy shit. That's like a... Like a big carrier's tempest, like an Olexstrass flash freeze. Like spammable Oblivion? Chaos damage. That's like a potential meme build, right? Rubrics Reapening, increased damage on the granted skill. Alright, yeah, I mean, this relic was kind of fine, to be honest. Hugo's Hunger, increased damage on the granted skill. Alright, that's cool. But. I was gonna use this over Dune Fiend, right? I don't know. Blaze Rush, increased attack speed to 22%. And modifier for Granada will support with support for flame touched. Um, oh, alright. I've given up on the Granada idea for this one, I guess. Oh well. It's now the two handed fighter strike weapon, I guess it's supposed to be. I guess it's for a two handed elementalist, right? Base Rush gives you. doesn't like support a shaman 
Uh, WPS as well. Blaze Rush not Blaze Heart, obviously. Yeah, it supports upheaval, right? Yeah, I mean, it, that makes kind of sense to support upheaval and then either fire strike or. Oh, that's actually for fire archon, like, it's pretty good for fire archon now as well. Like, no, for. Ar yeah, I mean, okay, archon got attack speed as well, 5%. Hmm. This might be very interesting for fire archons, actually. Like, the wire smite weapon damage is still insane. Kind of wondering what kind of support it is for Flame Touch, like, that's so vague, like, it could be just bonuses, right, or it could be, like, an insane type of conversion thing, or, I don't know, something crazy, right? Yo, Raynan, how are you? They nerfed Deathmark set again? <laughs> oh, holy shit, I get, oh, what? I mean, alright, people are gonna be so salty about that. <laughs> I can already imagine. Blood War increased. Attack speed to 18%, replace Pierce with Bleed. Alright, yeah, this is not the Bleed damage uh, weapon it's supposed to be, and not like a weird Pierce Bleed, I guess. But then again, why do I increase like attack speed for this? Like, what? Like, this, this doesn't make any sense at all. This is good, but this is like, what? Oh, what? Corruption. Corruption. What is this? Edit. What is that even? Added 4% CDR. Oh, this meme thing? Alright. <laughs> this is not gonna make it good. Come on, guys. Hex Dauncher increased casting speed to 18%. Yo, Hex Dauncher. Hmm. The plus one Arcanus is kinda bad. If this was like plus one Inquisitor, this would be so good for. Her. Well. You know, apostates, but... Nightstalk is pandered. After for 420% of yes, I, I will, I will. <laughs> I did 100%, uh, like 100 at first burn for 3 seconds to Rune of Hagarat. Alright, they're finally trying to buff Rune, I guess. Again, hype. Okay, okay. Rancor, that's gonna be nerfed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reduced physical resist to 6%, reduced bleeding resist reduction modifier for the Warring Swarm to 10%. I mean, the bleed modifier is whatever, but this is a nerf, this is a nerf. Increased bonus to Shaman's gets a plus 2, though. Alright, let me load up my character here. Maybe that's not too bad of a nerf, actually. So we got the two ender here, this one. We get plus two shaman, and I mean, yeah, they're losing ten percent bleeding resistance and four percent physical resistance, like ten percent bleeding resistance reduction and four percent physical resistance is is a nerf nevertheless, right? The plus ones shaman skills. What's it gonna do? It's like it's gonna give me maybe more. I don't know. Like it gives me. Uh, this doesn't give me 1% more absorption. Um, gives me 1% more attack speed, I guess. I have like some more points that I could put somewhere else, I guess. Yeah, I can like put points to other stuff, I guess. Like maybe to Heartseeker, maybe. Maybe to like the WPS here. Hold on. Ah, it's gonna be a nerf nevertheless, like. Yeah, it's it is a hard nerf. Like the plus one is not gonna make up for it. Not at all. But yeah, I, mean, I guess it's still a fine but Like Rancor was very strong to be honest. The Desolator increased percent attack speed to twenty-four, the eight to fifty-five, and increased bonuses to flashbang. Was Desolator even? It's like a two-handed um gun that you can craft, right? Yeah, Mammoth Resistance Blueprint, actually. What else does this do now? More in attack speed, DA, and flashbang. I mean, this is very nice for, like, two-handed purifiers, right? So, like, a bird that we're probably never gonna play, but... 
For people that enjoy Fire Strike, this is gonna be nice. Um, Vampires, increased Chaos Damage modifier for Reef Spirit. Oh, Emmanuel, check this out. <laughs> Action Witch's Moon, increased for Spirit Damage modifier for Ring of Steel to 220. Alright, and Cold. Alright, 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 that's very nice. They're making like Ring of Steel, Hagarad. Infiltrators. They're buffing it across the board, like there are so many um, items that got buffed for this type of build actually. Uh, Wrathguard increased pierce damage at the percent attack speed on the granted skull. What is Wrathguard? All these faction items I've never used. Oh, this, uh, this one. Range passive bonus. The fuck? It's like the, the Lidl... Um, how is it called again? Stronghold set, right? Oh well, I don't know. Is that gonna make it good? 100 pierce? Like 100 ranged pierce? Probably not. Playability, maybe, yeah, but not good. Atap's promise increased half to 350 and the A to 3%. Tap. Alright. Yeah, if you need the A instead of OA and your Latin build, then I guess you go this one instead of Sky Shard Powder now. It's not that bad actually. I mean, Petrified Duration is kind of whatever, but. Last bonus on top. Mother's Heart, replace Bleed Resistance with HP. Was that ever used? Is like HP gonna make this better? Probably not, right? Oh my god, how do you even write Mammoth? <laughs> wow. There we go. Uh, I don't know. This seems like whatever. Maybe even a nerf. Solize Glare replaced, replaced Bleed Resistance with Pierce Resistance, that's a buff. I mean, Pierce Resistance is always way more uh, useful than Bleed because you can just use Bloodied Crystals for Bleed Resistance right now. Which Black Flame plays Petrify Resistance with Stun Resistance. I guess that's a buff as well. Stun Resistance is more important than Petrify Resistance. Monster Inc. Recruit, uh, 200 Inc. Recruit. Oh, all of them have like, have like plus 4 now instead of plus 2 or plus 3, I guess. Redesigned bonuses to all mon MI belts. Each belt now grants plus 1 to a mastery and offers conversion. Holy shit. Uh, there was always already like a. Ugdenborg girl, right? Like the Ugdenborg girls, they were so good already. Or like, not so good, but they were close to being good. Like, imagine this one on a Witchblade. No, no, this one. Like this one, level 94 version, obviously. This one on a Witchblade, and it has like either plus one soldier or plus one Octototh. That would be insane, right? Why am I... Oh, there it is. <laughs> this one. No, this one. Level 94 version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this one, I don't know about that one. It's maybe good for, like, elemental deceivers or something like that. But there are some other... No, wait. There are only two in my beds, right? No, there's, like, um, no, there are more actually. Um, wait, how do you just search for belts? Belt? Wait, how do you search for belts? I guess. Oh, yeah, the gargoyle belts, they're pretty nice as well. Oh, and those. Holy oh, shit. Uh, Watcher spell from. What's it called again? Port Valbury is gonna be so nice as well. Like the one that has sun resistance on top, like this one giving plus one a mastery and you get like insane FXs. Sign me up. I mean, pierce resistance as well. Well, I mean, this one. <laughs> Actually, not this one. I mean, this one is decent as well, but this one is the, the one that has sun resistance reduction, right? This one has attack speed as well, though. Like, this one is also pretty good. Like, when do you ever get attack speed and casting speed on a belt? Like, the fuck? So good. Makes sense. 
I'm only using this ever, like I'm not using anything else here, but yeah, you can just press belt here and then you will see all the belts as well. Um, so yeah, belts are very interesting now, like belts are super interesting actually. Alchemos Scythe. They're actually buffing it. Oh. Oh, the green one, right? Yeah. 15% chance for double bloods, and this one 15% chance for double wires, might I guess. Increased percent of fire that. Yes, thank you very much, Zentai. I was. Um, well, I didn't tell him to do this actually, but I was speaking about this in some of my streams. That. The, um, this fucking character right here. Uh, where is it? Um. What of Alchemus? There it is. This thing has... Yeah, like for some reason this had 100% physical to cold conversion, right? But it also had like 70% fire to cold to pneumatic burst, like what? Was so weird. And now hopefully this has like 100%. I guess, I hope. Like, why, did, why does it not say the number? Why didn't they, like, include the number in here? Maybe it's, like, 69% kappa. Or, like, I don't know, 98 or something like that. Some weird number. Make no sense, but, I mean, who knows. Basilisk Fang added 100% of physical that is acid for as for agates of men here, actually. Wait, Basilisk? Isn't that, like... Supposed to be... Oh, this one. Uh, that's actually like a nerf, right? Wait, what? That's so bad. Oh, it's not. This one is fire to acid. I mean, hmm. You could use this for fire and poison before, right? It was actually better for fire than it was for poison. Uh, I mean, I, I hope they re replace the burn damage with something with something else. Then, like, this doesn't make any sense when this is like converted to poison, anyways. I mean, all right. So if you just use this and you don't use the modifier here, and you have like split fire and acid, right? Instead of physical fire, I guess. But why would you use split fire and acid when you can just go full acid? Why would you... I don't understand. But yeah, I hope they change this around them. That this is not fire damage and burn damage anymore, but something else that is like useful. Like maybe another type of resistance would be nice on this. Or, I don't know, HP or the A or A would be also nice. Uh, maybe that is too strong, but it would be very nice. Corvon Eldritch Halberd added modifiers for Smite. That's pretty nice. Storm Halberd increased cooldown reduction for Primus Strike to 0 0.7. So if you want to go cooldown, or like, yeah, CDR base, Primus Strike, I guess you. Maybe this is actually better than Ultos now for melee, I don't know. Hakla Skins increased vitality damage modifier for Venigo Totem to 100 and replaced its run speed reduction modifier with 15% fumble. It's pretty nice. That's a, like, 15% fumble is actually very nice. This is obviously useless, but this is very nice. Increased speed reduction modifier for souls and souls to minus 12%, and the other pack loss am I. Be nice as well. Added bonuses to fair hunger. I mean, yeah, I guess it fits the theme, but... It's not gonna make people use this, right? I don't know. Probably not. It's like, you need this for crafting anyways. Bloody Crystal reduced bleed resistance to 12%. Alright, so speaking about bleeding resistance, which was like super easy to get because of Bloody Crystal, this got nerfed down to 12% instead of 24%, so it got cut into half. Which honestly is probably fine. Like, all of my builds had like insane bleeding resistance because of those. So maybe I have to like revamp some of them to like add one or two more bleeding augments now. Most of my builds look like this because of these rings, like because of this ring component. 80% over cap. Let's take a random other one. I don't know. Praise the Sun, for example. Uh, 
uh, 43%, so this is gonna lose like 24, it's still gonna be at, I mean, plus 19 is not that insanely good, but it's still only bleeding damage, right? Bleeding damage is kinda whatever. You don't really need that much overcap for bleed anyways. Unless you're like fighting Kalagaja, I guess. Um, Alright, let's actually finally get started with the legendary items. Legendary non-set items. I'm a Rust and Crusher. This is the spammable Blade Burst item though. This is gonna be very nice. We're gonna maybe test this out actually. Um, I call him Electrolus. Electrolus. I mean, I guess. I've never used that item, actually. So I guess them buffing items that I've never used is kinda nice. This is for, like, Lightning Chosen, I guess, now, Which kinda makes sense. There was no Lightning Chosen so far, so... That seems good. Let me use this together with, what's it called? Um... Alagast, even? I don't know, probably not, but... I think Chosen would be very nice if it worked. Protolux increased Pierce to 50%, damage adjusted co accordingly, alright. I mean, apparently you could make a Pierce build with this, and uh, someone on the forums made this happen. Pretty nice for that, but other than that, it's like whatever. My phone didn't give me the little thing you to say you were doing this. Oh well. I appreciate you being here after all though. Welcome. Uh, Cinder Plate Girdle added 3% OA and increased crit damage to 7% reduced cooldown to skip rock. Wait, that seems pretty good. Nice, right? This is like a nice buff. Cinder Plate Girdle, that's like for fire. Yeah, that was the Pierce the Fire conversion thing. Yeah, this, this was kind of weak except for the conversion. So, yeah, seems good. Probably, I mean, you can use it on a fire strike purifier, I guess, or you can try to make something weird like a fire saboteur or fire infiltrator work, I guess. But that's probably still meme tier to be honest, unless they've changed like some other stuff as well. Condit of Night Whispers added 100% of acid dealt to lightning modifier to the lightning shadow strike variant. That is needed because otherwise lightning shadow strikes. Meme tier anyways, so yeah, thank you very much for adding that. And uh, this is like pretty nice with some other items. Like there's actually some support for Lightning Shadow Strike. Um, for example for Pants. Some other items. Uh, Condit of Undying Whispers, updated by the Fiend variant to be Vitality themed. Alright, I guess this is, yeah, I mean, that stuff, I have no idea about this. Mythical Covenant of the Three. I'm using this on my... Doombolt character, right? So increased burn bleeding damage and DA reduction to skill proc. I mean, thank you. Crimson Spike reduced Pierce ratio to 10%, damage addresses accordingly, added 13 vitality damage. This is like the vitality ring of steel uh, item, right? It's pretty interesting, but. And I also actually did a theory craft around this item like shortly before Forgotten Gods came out. But, I don't know, it's probably not that good still, but maybe we'll take like another look at this. Death Guard Sigil updated skill proc to have more probability damage times, alright, probably lost, I don't know, I have no idea, this is like whatever, I guess, like a small buff. <coughs> Decree of Eldritch, now this is interesting. Increased cooldown reduction for devastation to minus 1.2 seconds. So we had Eldritch... Scepter of Eldritch and then Decree of Eldritch, right? This one was pretty useless except for the conversion here and except for this. And I buffed this, I guess, which is nice. But is it gonna be good enough? Like 0 0.4 seconds scary charge? What can I do with that? Um, let me make this a spellbinder real quick. I mean, it's obviously for spellbinders. Um, so this has 5. No, 18 seconds scary charge, right? Holy shit. Um, and then Asteria I haven't got nerfed last patch, so maybe... 
This just makes up for Anasteria Helm getting nerfed last patch, right? Doesn't really make the build better than it was before that, so... I guess this item is still worse than Wrath of the Ascendant for like 99% of Spellbinders, I guess. Yeah, this is like minus 2 seconds still, like holy shit. This was like minus 3, I think, before. So 0 point... That's kind of a joke, right? Is it increased to or increased by? Like, it, it was like increased by minus 1.2, so that it's like a total of minus 2 seconds, that would be pretty nice. But like this, it's like, nah. I don't know, they're still afraid of buffing Spellbinder too much, I guess, because Spellbinder was so OP, like in Ashes of Mammoth. Dracarys, added plus 2 flame touch, removed plus 1 health for mine. Oh yeah, that was so weird, like why is it plus 1 to a single skill? Increased percent chance on kill for the skill proc to 100%. What is drug cards? It's like a Flames of Ignafar thing, right? No. What is this? Oh, pet. Okay, I have no idea about this. This is probably... Oh, that's the number thicker version, this one. But you have to kill yourself, right? It doesn't... Like, it doesn't count when a pet kills something, right? Uh, I don't know. It's probably still the same meme tier it was before. Uh, what else do we have here? We have Dredge, Dredge Scorcher. Don't use pure Aether damage. Thank you. 2 plus 2. Yo, Dredge Scorcher seems like legit now. Aether Purifier with Dredge, Dredge, <coughs> Dredge Scorcher. Seems very nice. Yo, Pnigs, how are you, man? Haven't watched your stream before. Why do you like damage conversion so much? I've never found it deeply useful. I mean, it does help you streamline. Naxon. Alright. Naxon. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, it helps you very much uh, for, like, it helps you for streamlining your damage. So, in the end game, in the very end game, you kind of want to only have one damage type on your character and then stack a bunch of uh, resistance reduction on top. Um, so yeah, that's why it's very nice. And um, I mean, most spells, like if you take a look at most spells, for example, for example, Devastation, right? This one has like fire and aether damage. So if you're going aether, you kind of want to convert your fire to aether. Or if you're going fire, you kind of want to convert your aether to fire. So for that, you need conversion to like have the skill on like 100% of its potency, I guess. After they overdose. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to make it work now, I guess, than before. Or, like it's way easier to make it work than before. So that's why it's maybe less interesting, but. Uh, to be fair, I think it's better now, because now, since so many items are starting to get conversion, you're not that, like, it's not like you only have to use that one item, and all others are trash, it's more like you have, like, different choices now, and you can choose between them which one is the most optimal for you, but, so, I can see this rather increasing build variety than decreasing it. So we have Mildred, Mythical Eldritch Gaze here, increased bleed and burn damage on... Oh, that's the Blade Arc thing, right? I mean, yeah, this needs a buff, so that's nice. Yeah. Nice not, small little buff for this one, for the Eldritch Gaze. Uh, Embercore, Shoulder Guard, added fire damage, 3% attack speed, and 25% lightning to fire. Increased burn damage on the skull, removed physical damage. This seems like... They want to make this for fire, fire strike, because, well, Uzuin got changed like two patches ago, right? So, people that wanted to play fire strike were kind of like, well, what should I use it now? And I guess your answer to that is Ember Core Shoulder Guards now. Because of the attack speed, at least. Even though this still gives you like canister bomb shit. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe they should have changed that one as well at the same, at the same time. 
Like, this is kind of weird now. Like, for a canister bomb, you just use Ulzuins anyways. And this one has attack speed, which is nice for a fire strike. And also the conversion is pretty nice for a fire strike, because a fire strike has, like, a bunch of lightning damage in it. Um... But yeah, they should have changed the, changed these around, I guess. Like, this doesn't make any sense now. Maybe it's not supposed to make any sense. Mm. Entropic Coil, reduced burn damage on the skip rock. Alright, that's... I'm fine with that. Like, it was a pretty nice, or like, pretty strong ring. Small buff, small nerf is kind of fine, I guess. Paras Cube, increased crit damage to 12%. Offensive ability to 4% and HP to 4% and increased cold damage modifiers for flames of Ignafar and penalties to 82 and 60 respectively. That's so good. I, I'm kind of sad that my penalties or like my cold penalties Mage Hunter died back in Forgotten Gods already. He was using this. Oh well. Maybe we're gonna remake that at some point. But yeah, cold penalties was kind of bad, and cold Ingafar, well, those are not the best. So, buffing both of those is pretty pretty welcome. Fate Weaver's Mantle. It's pretty nice that, get, getting rid, rid, that they are getting rid of um, things that proc when you're getting crit, because you just never want to get crit ever. So, realistically, this is never gonna proc. Um, that said... Holy shit, wait, this is gonna be so good now, actually. Like, This is gonna be, like, ghoul for casters, right? So, if you have your shoulders... If you have a free slot in shoulders, you just default to these now. They are just as good as chest. Like, the chest is, like, the default you default to when... When you're a caster and you have a free chest slot, right? You just use this one. And now, this is, like, the same for shoulders now. This procs at 45% now. I mean, this was trash before, but did they nerf the proc at least a little bit? Like, the proc seems so strong. Holy shit. Cooldown. Oh, okay. Cooldown adjusted accordingly, but just the cooldown, I guess. So this has, like, higher cooldown, I guess. Hopefully. Because this is. Like. I mean, okay, this is like whatever, but it's basically a 100% physical resistance buff, so you're gonna be... You're gonna have 80% fizz res. That's activated. Yo, Renan, how are you? Welcome. Deck of Treasures means got changed as well. Oh yeah, didn't they... Like, that's like the acid belt, right? They add, like, another acid belt, and, uh... Change the treacherous means back to the original, kinda. Also, that is saying, I stopped liking damage. Oh, yeah, uh, I would say the opposite. Some items are better on X but have conversion, so the conversion will punish X and make X unplayable and make another build doable, which will be a meme build. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, like, you would have to give me, like, examples of which builds it does interfere with, but. So far, I think it's rather better than worse. Sometimes you need skill points, but you can't get this particular item because it has conversion and reduces your damage. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that can happen, yeah, but... I don't think it happens more than before, to be honest. Mm, like, yeah, maybe it does every now and then. Or demolished by conversions. Oh, and FG already, yeah. yeah. It's true, like, when they... When, like, the first FG patch did introduce a lot of that conversion as well, and... That kind of fucked up some of the builds, that's true. But I think the conversion that they're adding now, it's, like, fine. That bad. Um, Fiend's Resolve, what is this? Oh yeah, that's the bad offhand, right? Uh, it's probably gonna stay bad. Gavilus Rev the Gavel, this is like the in physical internal trauma thing, right? Replaced conversion with 45 of fire that is physical, and before it was like some weird thing, I guess. Oh, it was fire to wit, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the physical side of things were so much better here, anyways, so you wanted to go physical, but then this was a DPS loss. If you were like able to convert the fire to fizz, 
Yeah, this is nice. Very nice. At least five times in FG, holy shit. I think I had it like zero times actually. Builders Pulverizer, this was a bad item before. Increased skill bonuses to plus four, increased RR, modifier for Granada to 25, 28, I mean. So this is a reasonable value. Like you have to make this, or like they have to make this, these types of um, modifiers be at least, yeah, like 25 to 35, right? So that they are actually competing with the devotions. So this is like a fine value now. This is actually usable instead of a devotion. I mean, is Pierce Granada gonna be good though? Like, I don't know. It's probably it doesn't have enough uh, item support, but at least this weapon is good now. So like, if there were like other items that were buffed as well, this would be actually playable now. In my opinion. Like you need, um, oh that's also as elemental to pierce. Wait, making full pierce Granada is not that hard, right? Getting another 40% elemental to pierce is not that hard, it's pretty easy, I think. Still gives you plus 2 all skills to Nightblade though, like what the fuck? <laughs> this is so weird. Why does it give you plus 2 Nightblade? And to be honest, like this only makes you not use Blackwater Cocktail and that's it, like the buff to this. I don't know. I don't know. Gut Smasher increased bonus to Soldier class skills to plus 2 and skill bonuses to plus 4. This is like the change they are gonna do for like basically every 200, right? Like every 200 that didn't have plus 2 to their respective mastery is gonna get plus 2 instead of plus 1. And they had like plus 2 or plus 3 to a skill, they will gain plus 4 now. And also this has more attack speed now. Increased HP to eight percent, yo, and more bleed for Eye of Reckoning actually. Interesting, interesting. That's probably still better for Cadence than it is for bleeding Eye of Reckoning, but that's a nice buff. This uh, like no manual is gonna like this as well. Yeah, you have Inquisitor as well. <laughs> exactly. Like, um. This would be, I mean, especially since you're using Granada, right? This would be so nice for Pierce uh, Purifiers rather than Saboteurs, because who the fuck wants to go Saboteur anyways? You have no exclusive and, uh, I don't know. Inquisitor just makes more sense, but it has no bonuses to Inquisitor. Hell Scourge increased OA by 70, or like 270. Increased all RR reduction modifier for Sigil to 22 and increased damage at the Skate proc. Why is this only 22? Xantai, please make this like at least 25, 28, or 30. Like, just as I said, they need to be around this to be viable compared to devotions, usually. I mean, that said, um, it's nice this thing got a buff because it was kind of bad. What is Hell Scorch again? It's like Fire Sigil or. Uh, it's only a 4. Only a 4 buff, by the way. Like, uh, it needs like, to be like 28 as well. Uh, wait, it doesn't even have any conversion. It's just. It's just this, and that's it. And. The body fair is not even good. Alright, it's gonna stay bad, I guess. Soldier has 10 RR, flat RR. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Like, Soldier's flat RR is not gonna do shit when you use Gildors because doesn't have. Also, soldiers is only physical, right? And that's it. Um, Horns of Korak added petrify and elemental damage reduction to the skill proc. Wouldn't reduce on the high level version. Wait, this had a proc. Horn of 
Korvark. I mean, that's obviously a buff, but... Oh, horns, not horn. Uh, oh yeah, this one, and that one. I was thinking about like an elemental, elemental conjurer with, with this thing, right? Savagery, like savagery conjurer. Um, I mean, that's pretty nice. I guess it helps a little. Probably not enough to make it good, but... Judgment of Empyrean, added percent lightning damage and 50% physical dead as fire, updated conversion to 45% of chaos dead as lightning, updated values of the granted skill, removed percent physical damage. What is this again? Oh, this one. <laughs> uh, the meme of hand, for the, the physical meme of hand. So... Oh, this is lightning now? But fizz to fire, chaos to lightning. Hmm. So I guess it's for lightning now. No longer a commander of hand, Pepe hands, indeed. Like if you. Ah, uh, well. Why didn't they buff Valdun's rifle? Didn't they buff it like last patch? He has all RR, yeah, on the transmitter, which gives you like 10, that's like, I don't really count that, to be honest. That's so bad. Um, there's like another item that gives you lightning judgment, right? So you could maybe do lightning judgment with this now. But I mean, lightning judgment is just a secondary skill, so you need like another main, main ability, I guess. It's probably gonna be still some kind of meme tier, in my opinion. Coven Worm added plus one shaman because this only had plus one, now it's like plus two shaman, right? Life Blaze Mantle increased OA to 40, added 3% cast speed, removed conversion, increased damage, and reduced cooldown on the skip rock. Yo, they're not only adding conversion, they're also removing conversion, as you can see here. And I think Life Blaze was actually. I, I think I like this removal now. Because if you want to do Vitality Blackwater Cocktail, you can just use, um, what's it called, the Red Lord set anyways, it has like 100% conversion. And if you want to do like a fire thing, that you, you can use this one now, yeah. I mean, there's Inferno Knight though, like, would you ever use this over Inferno Knight? Probably not, right? It's still gonna be useless item. But it's like maybe a better filler now for fire as well as for vitality. Um, mark of consumption reduced percent attack damage converted to health modifier and phantasm blades to four percent. This is another uh, rancor. Nerf, by the way. Mythical abyssal abyssal mask added a four percent casting speed. Abyssal mask is what? Oh, this meme thing. <laughs> Drain Essence. Vitality Drain Essence. Don't you have like a blue set? Don't you have like a blue set for this? For Vitality Drain Essence? And I think that one outperforms this mask by a lot. So yeah, it's gonna stay useless, I guess. You have one FPS stream? Wait, are you kidding me? No, it should be normal for me. Um, Adversary? Here we go. We're using this one on our Sheep Breaker. So as I've predicted, uh, we're gonna get class skills plus two. And alright, these are gonna be reduced down to plus two. I didn't predict that, but that should be fine still. So. Check out the Bomberman here. So the Bomberman has this one, right? So yeah, we basically we have the same amounts of bonuses to Shattering Blast and improved casing now. But we gain like plus one all skills basically because we're using Demo and Oathkeeper. It's gonna be insane. We're gonna update this character. Maybe maybe today actually. Maybe we're gonna do like an update stream after this. Um 
Amatox step added 24 Aether resistance. I mean, this was an underused pair of uh, boots, right? So that's pretty nice to have more resistances on bad boots. Underos amplifier reduced fire damage modifier for mortal trap to 55. That's maybe like a Pyron nerf, I guess. Pyron set nerf. Arcanum Electrodus. Oh, that's a mythical one. Yeah, 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 we had this already for like lightning. Jordan Skyshard, maybe. Bane of the Winter King, also plus two Shaman skills instead of just one plus one. And that's very nice as well. Um, Basilisk Claw. So, added 12% flat acid. This is the cooldown is like whatever on Flatterfreak, to be honest. Like, you can heal more often, I guess. That's nice. Uh, poison Retard to Blade Barrier is like. That's like a. A meme thing. Or like a flavor thing, I guess it's called. Increased cooldown reduction modifier to 2.45 for Blade Barrier. That's not that bad, though. That's pretty decent. Hey, feels good, Soya. How are you, man? Missed Adanar's Vanity. Actually, that way works it. Oh, there it is. Increased OA and DA to 130. That's a lot of flat DA and OA. Holy shit. That's actually insane in the membrane. Adonars. Vanity. This one had 88 OA and 24 DA before, so it's like an insane DA buff, actually. OA is like also, f I mean, 40 flat is. Or like 50 flat almost is also very nice actually. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. This is gonna be very good for like... I mean, this is one of the best, best items that you can use on... What's it called? Fire Devastation Sorcerer, right? And that one got buffed with another item as well. Like another item got buffed as well. That is for Fire Sork. Like Fire Devastation Sork. The, yeah, Fire Sork getting a buff for sure. Fire Devastation Sork at least. I don't see any um, Haras stuff so far, but maybe it's gonna be after this. Uh, yeah, it should be under set items, right? Um, Mythical Blood of Rokathon added 550 HP and plus one Shaman skills. Alright. Plus one Shaman, eh? So this one should be better for Vitality Shamans now as well. I guess. If you want to do like Vitality Ritualist, I guess, Vitality Ritualist Caster, and you want to convert the poison of Ravenous Earth to Vitality, you can use this now, or for Shaman as well. I mean, you were using this before on Kabbalists for the same thing, right? You were using this on like Vitality Caster Kabbalists for Ravenous Earth conversion from Acid to Vitality. And I mean, Ritualist was lacking a little bit. I guess, and this makes Richard stronger now, so that's pretty nice. And this is 550 HP, I mean, that's a lot of HP as well, like flat HP. Mythical Blood Song reduced. <laughs> it's getting nerfed again. Ha! <laughs> Alright. Oh well, I guess Bleeding Birds are getting nerfed all around. And Bone Shader Treads are like the good ones at least. Basically, 715 because of Heart of the Wild. Yeah. True. If you're using a shaman, that is at least. Um, bone shatter treads increase first rest to four percent, bleed rest to twenty eight. I mean that's again a bad pair of pants or like boots or like a not a bad but a mediocre pair of pants, boots. I mean hot shit. Um, so yeah, pretty nice. Uh, bone beef girdle added five percent first rest removed. Oh, increased OA to 110, increased bonus to Siphon Souls to plus 3. Uh, yeah, this was pretty terrible before. So, yeah, that's pretty nice that this gets buffed as well. Boots of Primordial Rage, Stun Res- wait, holy. This one gets Stun Resistance. Wait, this is like... If you need chaos instead of like, instead of poison and you don't need the HP that badly anymore, this is like better than Storm Titans now. Even it has more OA, right? Storm Titans is what? I mean, Storm Titans, had, Storm Titans has like a shit ton of OA, uh, HP though. <coughs> 
Storm Titans has like 700 flat and 4% on top. That's insane. But yeah, I mean, Primordial Rage doesn't seem that terrible anymore. It was super terrible before though, to be honest. Like, meh. It's not okay, yeah. It's not an alternative, I guess. I mean, the armor is still very low, and it's, I mean, it's caster boots 84 as well, so yeah, it's not that good in the end game. But yeah, very nice to see this buffed. Um, by this much. Brutalax, uh, yeah, same thing here, better pierce stuff, right? Butcher of Burwich, reduce bleed, bleed damage and reduce bleed damage and decrease scale proc. Alright, I didn't even know this one was OP, I guess. Uh, yeah, it got nerfed now. Shared Red Mantle, this one was a interesting one, but kinda lacking behind others, right? Increased OA, OA to 75, added 30% stun resist, and reduced cooldown on the skip rock. Wait, am I not using this on my Reaper, maybe? It's a pretty nice one. Oh, I'm using Titan Powder in this, actually. Mod song. I'm sorry, uh, Naomi, I'm not gonna play any songs during this, but after I would. It's gonna take like another hour though, I guess. Um, so where were we? Chill Flame Evoker added increased cast and attack speed to 18%. Chill Flame Evoker, that's like the cold uh, fire strike thing, right? Thing, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Buffing Saboteurs, I guess. Pretty nice. <laughs> um, Codex of Eternal Storms increased OA to 122. That's a buff, obviously. That's a pretty good item. Like, pretty decent item. It's like a craftable, right? So. That's pretty nice for people that... Oh no, it's only the 75 version that is craftable. This one isn't. Um, but yeah, this is for wood devil lighting traps. The fuck? And I think you were not using it for either of them because you were using a green MI for this and a green MI, green, green MI for this one, I guess. So uh, It's just like a small buff, but probably still a filler until you get like the good MI, right? Codex of Lies, increased crit damage modifier for AR to 15%, that's pretty nice. Codex of Lies is kinda usable already, that's pretty decent, and this makes it even better. So, yep, yeah, might be pretty good now actually. Codex of Truths, increased cooldown reduction modifiers for Hand of Gander to minus 2, your pure square is gonna be so happy. <laughs> and increased lightning damage modifier to Judgment to 90 to 300. Alright, seems good. Ethical Crimson Spike, reduce percent pierce ratio. I mean, it's it's still kind of a meme item, though. Crimson Spike, reduce pierce ratio. Yeah, we had the non-mythical one before, right? Increased attack damage converted to health modifier for Ring of Steel to 20%. That's insane, actually. And increased heal modifier for Wendigo Totem to 3% plus 300. That's also very nice. Yeah, I'm very tempted to try this build. Soon, yeah. Crown of the Revenant King added 4% attack speed, increased vitality damage modifier for smite. Oh wait, this was an item? Oh yeah, this is a new item, right? I mean, it looks nice, but... It was kind of weird, it had like weird bonuses. Can you zoom in, please? Uh, you mean like... This? Ah, oh, that's probably better. So I'll zoom in here, I guess. Mm. I mean... You can do, like, white head to oppressor, I guess, but... 
It's kind of lacking gear support besides this item, right? Mythical Death, Death's Reach, increased skill bonuses to plus 4, added 10% with bleed resistance reduction modifiers for Bloody Pox and Devouring Swarm. Um, there was like one guy in my chat that is just uh, playing a Vitality I have Reckoning build as a Sentinel as well. That guy would be happy. Uh, Mythical Death Omen added plus 1 Necromancer. What is Death Omen even? Oh, this one. Hmm. Vitality Reaper, I guess. I mean, it fits the theme of this item. It does fit it well, very well. Um, does it need more than that? Maybe not, actually. Like, Execution is a good uh, ability, so... I think... Vitality Reaper needs like better support from armor, like from the armor pieces now. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's worse than Trickster, for example. Yeah, it, it was very trash. Maybe it's better now. Hopefully it's better now. Like it's gonna be better, but probably not. Good enough. Devil's Cage Hauberg increased HP to 900. Then 900 flat on this is... Pretty nice. I mean, it's kind of a filler item. But it's a, it's a good item. Filler chest. That said, it's... For being a filler, it's pretty decent. Uh, maybe, like, if you have a... Your chest, like a free chest slot now, you could even use this. Or like a physical or no, for physical you're never a free chest, right? You're always using Warborn or Men here. I mean uh, Markovian or something else. Or Targo or something like that. And for Chaos, I guess for Chaos maybe, right? Um but for Chaos you have Rosins now, so it's just a filler. And more HP is not gonna change anything about that. Uh double tongue increase attack speed to eighteen percent, that's a nice buff for Purifiers, I guess. Who do you even use the Devil Tongue on nowadays? Like, you used to use this on the Fire Strike characters, Fire Strike Pyromancers for like Chaos or Fire before. Oh, it was. Oh yeah, it was you, right? Oh, it died. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Oh well, now it would have been better than before. Whoops. Dread Mask of Gorgoth fixed missing lightning damage modifier for Mortal Trap. Alright, this is good for Lightning Mortal Trap, obviously, you now. Mythical Dread Scorcher, we had this before, in the non mythic version, this is like... Uh, very good for... Um, well, Aether... Purifier, or Aether... I mean, you could go, what is this, Necromancer? Aether Defiler, even, but... I mean, Inquisitor is just better for ranged weapons than the Necromancer is, even if you're going Aether, I guess. I mean, Necro has more flat Aether damage, right? But Arcanist has the same amount of resistance reduction, and it's like a debuff that you cast, kind of like Curse of Frailty on Word of Pain, right? And this requires you, like, Necromancer's resistance reduction requires you to get hit, and that doesn't really mesh that well with a ranged weapon. Too many Aether range 200s now? I mean, there's only two, right? There's... There's always been only two, like the Red Scorcher and um, the other thing. What's it called again? The, the, the one that pierces, right? Lost Souls? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lost Souls gone, I guess. Yeah. Those two. There are only two. And the MI. Wait, which MI? I don't know any Aether 200 MI, to be honest. And if so, it's probably not that bad. I mean, not that good. <laughs> Mythical Earth Shattered Threads, updated values and granted skill, alright, I guess. Alright, Earth Splitter, I mean... Yeah, uh, it does need a buff. This maybe didn't need the nerf, but it's fine, I guess. Evoker of Algoroth increased bonus to savagery to plus 4, and that's like... in line with all the other buffs to items. But that's fine. They buff Shadow Strike? Alright, I'm gonna be very interested about that. 
execution of the judgment model increase attack speed to ten percent, increase deadly momentum to plus four. All right, buff hate weaver dismantle. We've talked about this. This is actually an insane buff. So whenever you're playing on caster and you have like a free shoulder slot, this is probably like a default option now. That you like a shoulder option that you can default to. Like before, it was kind of like Orion's shoulders for the f for the first rest, right? But uh, for those that don't need Dogarion's bonuses, that is probably better. Uh, Fiendscale Jackout. This was like a meme, right? I like pretty bad. Probably still pretty bad, actually. Added the A reduction to it. I mean, if you're a Vitality caster or like Vitality 200 character and if you're not using Blood, Lights, Blood Knight set or Valgur set or Dark One set, I guess then you can use this. This is like a filler, filler, filler item. Fiend Flesh Greaves added 350 HP. Alright, that's like a pet buff, right? Small pet buff. I yeah, like buff to pet builds at least. Fiend's Resolve increased percent attack and casting speed to 22%. What is Fiend's Resolve again? Fiend's Resolve. What? Why does it have attack speed? What? <laughs> You're never gonna use default attacks or like default attack replacers with this, are you? Doesn't make any sense. And casting speed to 22% though, that's pretty nice. Um, that makes this potentially nice for like spam, like spamming Drake's Evil Eye, right? But yeah, other than that, I mean, this was a super trash item before the last buff, and it's probably still bad. Maybe not super trash, but close to super trash, I guess. First dead curious increase bleeding resistance to 40%, that's pretty nice. Oh, I'm using this on my Reaper, right? Yeah, actually using this one. Alright, seems good. Okay, when threads added 50% freezing resistance, removed cold resistance. Uh, yeah, makes sense, this is actually a buff, like, code resistance was kinda useless on this, because usually you have, like, a bunch of elemental resistance anyways, and, uh, don't really need this. Gavel of Ravenous Souls, we talked about the non-mythical version before, replaced conversion with, like, first to fire instead of fire to wit, like, fire to fizz instead of fire to wit, right? So that's a very nice buff for physical, uh, virus might, like, Physical oppressor virus mat. No manual was playing a build like this, so he's gonna be happy. Guardian of Death's Gates. This is like the pet to handle, right? I mean, <clears throat> I have no idea, it's probably still not good enough. Guillotine added 4% away, increased bonuses to classes to plus 2. That's actually an insane buff to Guillotine now. Maybe Guillotine is gonna come back. Like, Guillotine seemed very nice on like bleeding warders, but. You don't need to use Gladiator's spell to convert Siphon Souls now. I mean, yeah, but then again, like, did it really matter? This is like, it's like your secondary damage, right? It's, it's, it's nice to have, but it's not gonna be a huge deal, like, not gonna be a huge difference. Um, Gut Ripper added plus two Shaman skills, added 120 bleeding damage per one for Grasping Wilds, alright. Also, uh, also another like two-handed bleeding water buff. So these two are both like for bleeding waters, melee variant and range variant. A Garadian enforcer increased attack speed to fourteen percent. That's probably still not enough to make like ranged um, infiltrator good enough. But maybe it's. I mean, it's not. It's not a terrible build. It's actually decentish. It's a little bit mimi, but it's decent. And this is gonna make it better. It actually had increased attack and casting speed to 23%. I mean, these two items are so terrible, and why do why the fuck do they have even at cast? I uh, I mean, at attack speed, like, like the corrupted one is for what for f um, it's like for caster witch blades, right? I'm not sure. Uh. In Ashcore, actually, not in Ashcore. Ashcore. Um, this one is for... 
Yeah, yeah, for like physical, like internal trauma which blades, right? That's what it does is for internal trauma which blades. So this one has what more casting speed? It's not gonna do anything. <laughs> it's gonna be just as bad. Like this is, I think you could make like uh, internal trauma which blade with us, mm, but. Like Dreek's Evil Eye and Blade Arc, for example. But. Like, number one problem is. Like, the best thing that Soldier has for internal trauma is Force Wave, right? And this. You cannot use Force Wave with this because there's an offhand and not a shield. So, you can still use Blade Arc, though. Or you could use. Well, Dreek's Evil Eye, but. <laughs> They're just so bad, right? Like, what the fuck? Why is this even Hellfire Mine? Like, what? How does Hellfire Mine help you with physical damage? What is this supposed to be? Spectral Wrath? I mean, this is what? Physical, alright, alright. Arcana, Soldier, Death Knight, Physical, what? Physical, Caster, Death Knight? You can use this together with the Physical Ravenous Earth uh, weapon and have, like, the worst build ever, I guess. Mythical Judgment of Empyrean, that was the um, other physical offhand, right? This one has... which is like a lightning offhand now, right? Or like lightning judgment, I guess. Which is kinda meme as well. Mythical Leviathan, now this is gonna be interesting. Increased bonus to Amorastus Blade Burst to plus 4, alright, that's not very interesting. Increased physical damage modifier to Amorastus Blade Burst to 110. Alright, now this is like... alright. Still kind of underwhelming. I was hoping for like more on this, but oh well. Mythical Life Blaze Mantle. Yeah, we've talked about the non-mythical one. That's basically the same thing. It's like still a filler. Life Giver Signet. Increased the A to 55. Increased proc chance of the proc to 15%. Um, that's like the Life Seal filler. If you need Life Seal and you don't have the items that you would like to have, you use Life Giver Signet, right? Corwin Worm. Added plus to Shaman and Inquisitor. That's the physical prime strike thing, right? Um, I don't know why it has Inquisitor, like, this doesn't really make that much sense. It's like a Warder weapon as well. So yeah, Warder being kind of terrible, except for Avenger set. This makes sense, so that's kind of nice. You can use Inuxual's head with a weapon that shoots the bone thing. Oh, nice. Yeah, that could be... Possible, maybe. I think they buffed the bone MI, or like the bone thing, last thing, or like last patch. No itemization exists <laughs> for those offhands. Nah. There's some stuff that exists, but it's not, like, not gonna be good. Yeah, bone is terrible as well. Yeah, probably. I didn't check it out, but yeah, it's probably terrible. Um, where are we here? We are at Mark of Calamitious Desires. Now this one was super good before. Alright, they just re reduced fire damage when you fire to Mortal Trap. It's still gonna be ridiculously good, to be honest. Like, this metal is so good. Mark of Calastor increased OA to, 50 to 85. What is that even? Mark of Calastor. Oh, that's the... this one. That's the Octavius one, I guess. Octavius metal, alright. I guess Octavius not... I mean, it's still kind of good, but I don't know why they need to buff this. Maybe they want to streamline these, I guess. Mark of Urzu in this is used for Fire Aether Ray now. And nothing really except for that, I guess. So, well, that's my buff to Fire Aether Ray, I guess. More of this bear added 26 Aether damage for Field Command. <laughs> what? Oh, for like Aether, Pet, Death Knight, I guess. Other than that, it doesn't really make any sense. What is more of this pair even? Oh, this one? Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, Aether, Battle Mage with Kaladir's Tempest. I mean, we all know how good Kaladir's Tempest is, right? Murmur's Kiss? No, Murgo's Mortality. Added Vitality, DK damage. Alright. See, that sounds fair. Wait, this didn't, didn't have it before? Right? That's like a caster pistol, right? Oh, well, yeah. This is, uh... 
I don't know why they didn't do those like 10 patches earlier. Remember, skills added 60 OA, increased bonus to lethal assault plus 3, and increased damage on the skill proc. Remember, skills. Oh, this one, right? Oh, yeah. Alright. A small buff for the already nerfed uh, Venom Blade Dervish, I guess. Nadan's Reach reduced bleeding damage for Ring of Steel. No, Raynon, your build, Kappa. Knight, Knight's Embrace added 6% Cold Pierce Resistance modifiers for Weight of Shadow, removed resistance reduction from the Granted Skull. I mean, this is probably a buff, honestly. Because passives are almost always better than having to like stay and cast stuff. But I think the the proc had like more than six percent. I mean the the cast had more than six percent. More than six percent. That's a race, right? This one had fifteen percent actually. All right, that's okay. This is actually probably yeah. That's like a huge nerf to be honest. Like nine percent less. It's better quality of life, but probably a nerf nevertheless. Yeah, yeah I was just copying. Like, I mean, it's not really an advanced nerf. Like, who who cares about the bleeding damage on this? Like, it's whatever. Nightshade's reach. Um. Wait. That is proc. Aids. On the venom. Alright. More poison on this, I guess. That's not gonna make this weapon good. Like, it's. It needs a little bit more than that, I think. But maybe since, like, the other poison shadow strike stuff got buffed a bit, maybe this is also better than. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed with the change here as well. Like, they could. This weapon could do, or it could be so much more. Northern Worm, that's a pretty meme item as well, like plus one to his class. It's probably not gonna save this one, but I mean, that's like streamlining, st streamlined buff, right? As for Rattus, at a 10% physical and 35 bleed resistance for pets. That's probably insane. 10% physical at least. I don't know, I'm not a pet expert, I have no idea. That's probably gonna be very good though. Very good build, uh, I mean, very good. Very good buff for bleeding pets. Maybe like pets in general I want to use this now because of the 10% physical resistance. I don't know. See the Juggernaut replace bonuses to fighting form with plus two soldier skills. Um that's pretty good though. But then again, this item was better than a pyromancer, right? Before. And like buffing the soldier side of those. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Expecting Nemesis monster buff in 2030? Yeah, probably. Pagat's betrayal. But I think, like, Nemesis don't need a buff. Like, most of them don't need a buff. Like, some of them, yes, but not all of them. You also have to think about, like, new players, right? Pagat's betrayal. Increase retail damage added to Flames of Ignafar to 8%. Alright, if you want to do, like, retail Ignafar, you use this one. Pandemic added 4% CDR. Uh, Alright, that's like for Ravenous Earth, right? You can use Pandemic for RE. Pestilence of Dreg added conversion based on the plague it rolls. Wait, what? 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 Oh, I didn't even know this had like... What? This was already a thing? Plague of Rust? Physical? Chaos? Poison? Dude, I got so lucky on my... Um, what's it called on the Doombolt character because that one had... Vitality. I think it has this one. The Plague of Consumption. That's crazy. Alright. 
So, oh well, okay. Yeah, you use the Seaver or Pyromancer for that weapon, exactly. I think Soldier and Obsidian Juggernaut is basically gonna nerf because th people will think it works with Soldier now, but it doesn't, exactly. It's really just, it's just a Jibate. Guys, don't get Jibated. Um, Quill Thrower of Dreek increased Oculus bonuses to plus two. I mean, just a streamline buff. I think this weapon needs way more than that to be good. Rune of Elgadoth reduced lightning damage modifier to Mortar Trap to 1 to 100 and added 100% of physical date dealt as lightning. Okay. It's a buff, right? This is a buff. This... So overall it's probably a buff, but... I guess you could, could get the conversion from another item before as well. I'm not sure entirely. But maybe you couldn't. I have I don't really know Mortal Trap that well, to be honest. Rune God Greaves added 22% chaos resistance. Those were pretty decent already, like, they were not that terrible. Having more resistance is pretty nice, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like, these were pretty decent. I think Mortar getting buffed all around, yeah, true. True, low W. Shadow Flame Mantle added 4% Fizz Rest, thank you. Removed Cold Resist, oh well. I mean, it's probably still not the best item. But Fizz Rest on a bad item is a good buff. Shroud of Illusion added 25 Aether to Animatical Conversion. Replace bonuses to Aura of Conviction with plus 2 Aura of Censure. That makes sense for Elemental, obviously. Shroud of Illusion was a complete meme item, right? So this getting a buff is uh, pretty nice. Elemental Tactician, Cadence Tactician. Oh yeah, this is for like... Yeah, yeah. True, this was for... This is for uh, Elemental ca uh, Cadence stuff, right? Yeah, and that's pretty bad, so I guess... It's fine. It's pretty decent. Why Aether to Elemental though? Like, Who benefits from this? So this is just for Arcanists, right? For Arcanists using Fabric of a Reality, Flat Aether, and also for um, the one exclusive, right? Shroud is GG chest? Uh, this was... I mean, it was GG chest on the one build, right? It was GG chest on the one elemental cadence build, and that's it. So yeah, I guess elemental cadence got buffed because of this. A little bit, at least. Mythical Silver Bolt increased bonuses to all skills to plus 3. Oh yeah, because like this one was... Plus 2 skills on Silver Bolt was like the only thing that made this good, and because everything else gets plus 2 now, they buffed this to plus 3. Makes sense for me, since it's pretty decent. Uh, starting gonna be good, I mean, it competes with Valdun's rifle, right? And... Yeah. There was like a time when this was better than Valdun's. Maybe it still is better than Valdun's, I actually have no idea. But yeah, useless for Pierce uh, ranged characters. Sky Bridge Bulwark increased the A to 150. Yeah, okay, I guess this was pretty bad before. But yeah, all the shields were getting s buffed as well, right? All the shields give you like flat the damage type that they are doing, or like the damage type that they get, that they also give you percent damage for, right? So instead of all the shields having flat physical, you will have like flat fire, flat lightning, flat, flat acid shields. But that's gonna be awesome actually. It's gonna be way better for all the non-physical Agus of Manhir builds, for example. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Spell Drinker replaced bonuses to Blast Shield and Conversion with plus 3 Thermite Mine and Arcane Will. Alright. I, I guess. That's, that, that's maybe a buff. I'm not sure. Not, I don't know. It seems like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know if there's a buff or a nerf, actually. Spirit Seeker Cord added a 35% pierce to poison and poison resist. Wait, 35 pierce and poison resist for pets. Alright. Um, okay. 
Another buff for Prats. Soul Lance, increased bonus to skills to plus 4 and adjusted values on the skill proc. I think this was like a two-handed vitality meme-ish item or something like that. I have no idea and this is probably... I mean, that's just a streamline balance thing, like a streamline buff and whatever. Star Fury, Emerald, added 5% CDR. Star Fury is the one that has the conversion for Aether Ray as well, right? Oh no, that's the Chosen Skyshare one, never mind. Chosen needs a buff, so this one getting a buff is pretty nice for Chosen in general, I guess. You mean physique based offense? Yeah, basically. This is a nerf, kinda, yeah. Yeah, probably. I don't know why they would nerf this though, like, I don't know. It's so weird. Stone Fist Rebuke, increase physical damage modifier for False Wave to 100. Thank you. Um, yep. False Wave was. Well, like, it is a very good skill up to 94, but in the end game it's pretty bad, like 200 False Wave at least. So, yeah. Nice to see this getting buffed. Stone Bearers, increased with rest to 35. Yeah, okay, I, I guess. Decent. Storm Reaver increased bonuses to Inquisitor to plus 2. Oh shit, Vindicator is insane with us already, right? And this is like a, a streamlined buff as well, so Storm Reaver Inquisitors may be back, but then again, like Wind Devil and Stormbox got nerfed quite a bit, right? In the last recent, or like in the last couple of patches, so. Not gonna be that OP, I think. Storm. Stormweave armor added 3% Fizzeras, increased OA to 90 and DA to 60. That's like the Lightning Shadow Strike one, right? Stormweave armor. Yeah, this is Lightning Cold Shadow Strike. And like, I don't know, Chosen, I guess, Lightning Chosen as well. And uh, Chill Surge, which is, I don't know what this is actually. This is uh, Rune of Hagarad, maybe? Yeah, I think this is Hagarad. Um, but yeah, this one it was pretty bad. So yeah, nice to get, nice to see it getting buffed. Tainted Ruby of Gardal, increased damage on the skill proc, and added percent damage reduction to it. Okay, this is very nice for Aura Mancers, Aura Fires, or Aura Dins, I guess. Alright, Temporal Arc Blade, increased skill bonuses to plus 4. Yeah, that's like another um, streamline buff, I guess. Time Warped Walkers, uh, Peace Girl would be happy though. Time Warped Walkers, adding 24% bleeding resistance. Alright, kinda whatever, I guess. Tome of Atonement, I mean, yeah, again, bad pair of pants getting buffed, good, but not anything amazing. Tome of, At Tome of Atonement. Increased percent damage modifier for Dereek's Evil Eye to 100%. That's nice. That's very nice, actually. I was theory crafting a lot with this thing. This seems, uh... Oh, yeah. Tone, obviously, but Tome. Um, this is Fire, Dereek's Evil Eye, right? That's another 20% multiplicative on top. It's pretty nice. It has huge potential, yeah. I was looking at this when Forgotten Gods came out and I was like, Wow. This is super good. This is super interesting. These are also super interesting. Like, you just do Dreek's Evil Eye as like your burn burn thing, right? Your main burn. And then you either use uh, this and go Inquisitor. And this is basically your Blackwater Cocktail for Inquisitor. I don't like that this is still 22 only. Like, as I said before, these need to be at least 25 or like 28. I think 20, 28 is like a good number, but 22 is kind of bad. Because um, 22 kind of still makes you want to go for devotions on top, and well, that's not how this should work, in my opinion. Like, these modifiers should be supposed to make you not use devotions that have flat resistance reduction, and this one fails at doing that as well. Um, or you can just use Blackwater Cocktail, right? This one. Doesn't need it. I, I'm kind of intrigued to use Color Store though. Like Color Store feels. I don't know how it feels. Like I've never played Color Store. I've played so much Blackwater Black Cocktail while leveling, and Color Store I've only used it, used it once, like as a one pointer, the last guy I leveled. But just because I needed like a random spell to like put a put a devotion point on, so I didn't really play it. 
So yeah, that seems uh, very interesting for well, either fire deceivers or fire pyromancers actually. Actually giving, like this is finally maybe what fire pyromancers finally need, like pyromancers should be good for fire damage, right? That's where they're called pyromancers. But pyromancers was kind of bad, as, bad at like fire caster for a long time now. Um, so yeah, that's uh, nice that this one got buffed. No, with this one. Turian's Reprisal, that's the Retaliation Mirror of Eryokta's Shield, right? And also Blackwater Cocktail, actually. Alright, more retail. If you want to do re Retaliation black Blackwater Cocktail, I guess you can do that now. I don't know why would you would like to do that, but it seems kind of boring to play. Venomancer's Girl, uh, added 25% of Chaos dealt to Acid. Increased Acid Damage Modifier for Body Packs to 55. Um, I don't know. Is this better than Vestments of the Great Guardian, or is this better than Dreekset? Probably not, right? Sure. Venom Spine Greaves increased the A to 80 and updated values of the Skip Rock. I mean, that's actually. These are pretty decent for Poison, so. Because the proc is still pretty nice. Just getting a buff is, <clears throat> just getting a buff is pretty nice for poison bolts. Uh, chaos to acid on this as well. Conversion. All right. All right. Wild blood mantle updated the skill proc. Uh, yeah, I guess. Doesn't really say what it does, so I can't really comment on that. Voice of the Rig added 25% chaos to acid as well on this. All right. Is this for like acid doom bolt or what is this supposed to be? Like all this conversion, all this chaos to acid conversion on this stuff. I don't really know. Maybe it's for like Dreek's Evil Eye. Does Dreek's Evil Eye have like chaos space in some of its nodes? Uh, where is it, Demo? I mean, Occult, Occult Test. This is Acid Poison. This is Acid Poison. This is Vitality and Retail. And this is Acid Bit. Alright, there's no chaos here. Why would you? I don't understand. I mean, I guess it was missing, but it won't really change that much, right? Yo, Shade, K, okay, thanks. How are you, man? How do nerfs buff buffs uh, work in Grand Dawn? Do they do existing items I own that get buffed nerfed get changed as well? Yes, everything, like all your items that you're using right now, they will be changed as well. So not only new items that you find, but also those that you have in your stash, those that you have on your character, all of them are gonna get changed. So yeah, if you have a buff on your item, you can feel happy right from the moment you've downloaded the patch, if you have like an item that got changed to another item that kind of fucks up your build, then your build is, well, affected negatively. Hashtag that build. I mean, you will probably find a good replacement though, but it's gonna be a little bit annoying maybe. But that doesn't, that doesn't have happen that often to be honest, like it's, it's fine. What Mancer's Cord added 35% pierce for pets. Alright, I guess more pet buffs. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Void Walker foot pads increased chaos and vitress to 40%. I mean, these were bad boots. Bad boots getting buffed is always decent. They're still probably not gonna be the best, but that's fine. Vortex of Souls. Wait, that's the other two handed weapon, right? That's the one getting physical resistances. Interesting. This is the other two handed um, ranged weapon, right? Vortex of Souls. Alright, Arcanist Necromancer. Wait, you still use like Fire Strike with this, right? Or what do you use with this even? No, you don't use Fire Strike maybe. What is your default attack replacer? With Vortex of Souls. Aether Primus Strike? Oh. There's a conduit for that, right? You just don't use it. <laughs> Oh man, like the passive is pretty good though. Like this, it's not bad. You're using like Fire Strike for example. Shaman or Component. Alright. Yeah, true, you can just use a... Man, but using a Component for two-handers feels so fucking bad. Like you, you're already only limited to only one Component and then you have to use that one Component slot for your default attack replacer. Like feels bad, man. So 
so yeah, I'm not gonna use it. If you would like to play 200 Aether, either feel free to use this or Dread Scorcher. Dread Scorcher actually seems better now. Watcher of Erulan, this was like another shield, Inquisitor shield that had like a range bonus, right? Increased physical resistance to 16 and total speed to 15 on the granted skill. I mean, I guess. It's probably still gonna be not that good. Whisperers of Secrets, like a good filler, I guess. Until you get the Stronghold set. Whisperer of Secrets, increased HP to 480 and DA to 96. I don't even know what that is. Of Seek. Yeah, or not Whisperers and Whis. I'm so bad at writing English stuff sometimes. Whisperer. Oh, only one Whisperer, not two of them. Um, oh yeah, what is this? Pierce, Blade Arc, and Bleeding Ring of Steel. What? <laughs> what? Is that is so bad, right? Like... For Bleed, you just use Blood Rager anyways, and for Pierce... Like, you just don't do Piercing Blade Arc, right? What is that supposed to be? Um... Windshear Greaves increase first rest to 4% and positive resist are right. These boots were actually pretty nice already, like they're decent. Wraith Rockers getting stun resistance as well. Holy shit, these boots are. They were not as bad as some of the other ones that we had before. Pretty decent. Transmog Helm, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Wrath of Tenebris increase bonuses to Oculus at plus 2. Hell yeah. Let me load up my spinner here. Spin to win Chaos Char. This one is getting buffed. Seems good. Um, I mean, not gonna change that much. I'm not using that, that like I'm not using that many points here actually. One, two, three, four, five, six points, right? I mean, okay. We get more. We get one percent more absorption. That's pretty decent. One percent more, like one point here more. I guess whatever. Uh, a little bit more OA. A little bit more. Flat Chaos, and a little bit more percent Chaos, and 1% more Vitality Resistance, I guess. And you can like, pull one point here again, after getting the point, and then put it somewhere else, I guess. I don't know where exactly. Maybe like here, or here, or here. No, not here, but... Hmm... Yeah, we'll, we'll check that one out later. Um... Wretched Tome of Nardin. This is another Dreek's Evil Eye. I'm very interested in all the Dreek's Evil Eye buffs, like all the Dreek's Evil Eye items actually. Needs plus two Inquisitor. Wait, this one? No, no. Maybe, well, maybe, yeah, but... Then it would be... Yeah, I could use like Razen's shoulders here maybe. Wait, if you use like Razen's... 3 piece, you get 22 possession, right? 22 possession is really good, that's true. You could use like Razans here. I guess somehow. Like, okay, maybe I. Maybe I'm finally gonna do the switch over to like full 4 piece Razans. Like, I really didn't like Razans because you had to cast Curse of Frailty. And this one gives you the ability to just spin and not have to interrupt your spinning for casting Curse of Frailty. But I guess now you can just go for like full Razans here. Go Raz. What happens here if you go for Razans? Obviously my energy is gonna be way worse, but yeah, we're gonna get 22 possession then. With the plus one hour skills here. And then this will be 22 as well. I mean, this was 22 before as well. One point here. And then we have like, mm, just some points here, right? Plus one here. That's down to 11, I guess. This is like, uh, I don't know. Oh, well. How do I get plus 3 out of Reckoning then? Hmm... Wonka? Hmm... I 
Like, you want this, right? But you can't use double because then you lose uh, possession again. You don't need 26 UR. Yeah, yeah, the shoulder gave it, I, I know, but... Um... Wait, but isn't like 26 EOR better than... Like having possession at 20 and EOR at 26 should be better than having possession at 22 and EOR at 23. Like uh, this gives you a bunch of weapon damage, yes, but... The weapon damage percent on this is kinda low, like this is more about the flat that you get, right? Overcapping ER is not good anymore, yeah, but... I, I know, it's not that good anymore, but it's probably still better than getting flat chaos here. Because weapon damage is also not that good here. I don't know. Can be tested. Should be tested, probably. And also energy is gonna be worse with the setup. Like, actually way worse. Oh yeah, we need uh, like two points here, though. <clears throat> For Rosens. Um, Alright. So, Rich Tomb of Nar Ardin added 45 chaos to acid conversion, increased poison duration by 100%, increased acid damage modifier to acid uh, to Drake's evil eye, and reduced poison duration modifier to 50%. Wait, what? Increased poison duration to 100? Oh, this is general, and this is like just for this. Okay. Okay. I guess poison duration is like about the same then in total, probably. You would rather deal twenty percent more your R damage than increase all chaos damage. Of course, it's a it's a one it's a one uh, ability build, man. It's just it's just using uh, your R and nothing else. Like this is so. I mean, yeah, it's also using Doombolt, but Doombolt is a one-pointer, and also Doombolt had like more points into it with the other setup as well than with this one. So, of course I'm gonna care about I Reckoning having as much damage as possible, because it's literally a one-ability build, right? I mean, you have Dark Desires rune and Doombolt in between, but that's like, whatever. There's just like small nukes in between. Buffing all the boots. Yeah, they did the same on the last patch already. I liked it on the last patch, but most of the boots were still trash, and they're doing it again. So, yeah, I like it. Rimscape footguards added 50. Wait, what? This one as well? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so much, even. Worm. Alright, alright, alright. These were so trash as well before, and right? they were so bad. Now they're actually like 50% stun, resistance. Like, you don't have to default to these. Like, you take a look at a lot of my builds. Like, I'm using Storm Titan threads on like so many of my builds, even though they don't really like fit the build necessarily, but they give you so much HP, poison resistance, elemental resistance, and reduced stun duration that I'm using them on so many builds actually. Yeah, I can probably switch them around, like, for some builds now. It's very interesting. I gain 1% absorption, though, only. It's 1% absorption. And if you say, like, 5% DPS loss, and the other thing would be, like... Yeah, I would take 5% more DPS co uh, over, like, 1% absorption, to be honest. Your boots deal chaos damage though. What? Wait, what? <laughs> what are you even saying? What do you mean? Uh, all right, not. Alright, so we're gonna try to skip all of those that have like mythical versions anyway, so these three, we're gonna skip them. Alright, this one, we are not gonna skip this one. Tr pack of Treacherous Means has been refocused on its original direction of pure damage range play. A new belt, pack of deadly memes, means, not memes. 
he yeah he even wrote that in here like <laughs> has been added to the loot pool that enables the dual wield direction from 1.1.3 seems good they teased this like two days after 1.1.3 came out right I, I don't know why they didn't put this into 1.1.3.1 into the hotfix to be honest but yeah we finally got it it's an awesome change i like it very much weapon well, yeah, but do I really care about that? Like, electrocute doesn't get converted anyway, so I'm 60 to 210 lightning damage, like, what the fuck? Who cares? I mean, I, I'm not saying I will definitely change these boots around, but I will at least take a look at other builds, or like, at other boots, and maybe change them around. But, uh, yeah, chances are not 100% I'm gonna change them, obviously. Shazul is getting buffed. Oh yeah, a streamline buff for soldier skills plus two makes sense. Um, yeah, that's actually a buff because well, you use so uh, Charzul with soldier like one hundred percent of the time, anyways, right? You are never using Charzul without soldier, so yeah, makes sense. Pretty good. Shard of illusion makes me want to get this item even more. Like this is still like one of the only items that I don't have in the game. Like feels bad, man. Uh, yeah, we talked about the mythical version of the Spark of Reality. Wait, was there a mythical Spark of Reality in here? No, they just buffed the... Oh no, there, there's no mythical version of this. Increased damage, chaos damage to 5 to 39, added 1.2 duration modifier for Mirror of Eriocteus. I mean, as long as the conversion of this is on Arcane Will and not on, say, a permanent buff, like... Uh, what's it called? M Maven Sphere, for example. It's gotta be a little bit sketchy, right? Yeah, like... Targo's not the strongest. Like, Targo's one of the weaker ones. So yeah, probably Octavius or the Retail. I mean, there are a lot of uh, people that have killed Kalagadra using a retail warlord, and there are a lot of videos about that on the internet as well. For example, a Doom God killed uh, Kalagadra like I think like one day after. I mean, a Doom God is a Praetorian, obviously, so he has like the knowledge on how to kill Kalagadra, or like he had the knowledge how to kill her like way earlier than other people. But I think he killed Kalagadra and like I don't know, like way faster than Pew Square. Uh, the boat did get nerfed in the meantime, obviously, but that's still pretty decent. And yeah, there's also... I don't know about SR, to be honest, but it should be pretty good. I don't know if it's better than Infiltrator, but it should be very, very good, yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about this. this. Mythical Soul Rand. Hell yeah, please buff this item. Increase bonuses to Phantasm Armor to plus 4. Added plus 2 Necromancer. I mean, I would have liked a modifier for Bone Harvest more than this, but I'm gonna take that. That's insane. Alright, Ocelot, good night. Until another time. See you on, uh, well, maybe Saturday. <clears throat> so, plus two Necromancer here is insane, right? I mean,. Just not having any skill modifiers is still kinda hurting it though, like most of the good items have skill modifiers. But then again, also Sharzul doesn't have any skill modifiers, right? So I guess it fits the theme of these uh, kind of items to not have skill modifiers. But yeah, I will definitely try to revamp the split a little bit and uh, try to make twenty six out of sixteen bone harvest happen. And also maybe I can switch it around so that I don't need Master of Death anymore, like, and maybe you can use Harbinger of Souls instead. I mean, that's, uh, that doesn't really do that much for me, right? Like, we don't really care that much about the attack and casting speed on a, on a Soul Rend, but, like, Soul Rend is all about the 
skill cooldown reduction, right? Um, Alright, Shard, uh, where are we? But yeah, it's nice they at least finally buffed us, even though this is only a, well, a streamline buff, right? I mean, this is a streamline buff, this is actually not a streamline buff, this is just added on top. That's pretty nice. Uh, we talked about the mythical of this, same here, same here, same, yeah, alright, same here. Legendary set items. Oh shit, how long is this fucking patch? <laughs> Alagas. Masterpiece set. Increased lightning damage for Trozen. Reduced Aether damage for Stonebox. Alright, this was strong before it got the nerf. I don't know why. Maybe it got like compensation otherwise and like for like another uh at like another point. And this one has this. Alright, alright. Um by the way, it should convert it shouldn't convert like the the coal to aether, right? Because the frostburn still frostburn, it should convert the frostburn to lightning as well. So it, the set should have like coal to lightning instead of coal to aether conversion, maybe. They could have added like coal to aether and lightning to aether if they really wanted to make a mixed damage type. But yeah, oh well. Blight Lords swapped conversion with shoulders, swapped conversion with hum, alright. I don't really care about that on my boat at least. Maybe you guys are gonna care about this. Blood Rager's Frenzy. It's gonna bit get nerfed, right? It's another ranker nerf. Removed crit damage and reduced percent damage bonus on the skip rock. Oh well. Yeah. I mean ranker is getting nerfed. I mean that was kinda obvious that it's, this is gonna come, but oh well. Bone Monger, um, this getting buffed is very nice. I mean, it was an interesting set, but still kind of underwhelming. More attack speed, more fizzers, modifier, all resistance reduction modifiers for smite is pretty nice. Especially like the Oathkeeper side of things of this set was very underwhelming. So yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice. A hey, coffin spirit. Yeah, rune guard greaves are so good now. Your pro trickster, yeah, my trickster got scuffed a bit, but I mean, it was so strong. Kinda. And also, like, so many people on the forums were using similar builds as well, and they were pretty strong as well, so... It, we kinda had it coming. Chill Whisper set, reduced core damage modifier for Blade Spirit, oh well. This is another change that kinda doesn't want me... Like, that does not make me want to play a Chill Whisper set. Anytime soon, Dark One set... Oh yeah, just getting Shaman support for Bloody Pox. I mean for um, Wendigo Totem, right? So yeah, Dark One is also a farmable set for not only Vitality Cabalists now, but also very nice for Vitality Ritualists, or even Conjurers, to be honest. But yeah, Chiris also still has no Fizzress, <laughs> too. Yeah, um, I don't know why Rune God Greaves got buffed as well. Like, I think Rune God Greaves were like not super OP, but they were they were certainly not one of the worst pair of boots. Like, they were pretty decent. They were usable on some builds. Yeah. Um. Anyways, Death Guard set increased crit damage for Shadow Strike to twenty five percent. All right, nice, nice, nice. Shadow Strike does need some love. Death Marks Shadow set reduced for the rest ten percent. Another Death Mark nerf. <laughs> People are gonna be upset about this, I guess. And the mythical stuff here as well. Oh, there we got. Oh, it's shit, like trip and nerf for death marked. <laughs> oh well. Uh, yeah, people are gonna be salty about this, I guess. Deception of Dreg. And a 6% Fizzress and 50% Chaos to Acid conversion. Uh, I mean, this is very nice. Fizzress on the caster set, please, yes. Give me that. And like the complete set has like. Whoa, Com like 100% chaos to acid almost, right? I mean, I mean 75. And you can use like another item, then you have 100% conversion chaos to acid. Is this really gonna help the set that much? I don't know, maybe. Demon Slayer's defense reduced physical resist on the granted skill. Uh, okay. Reduce weapon damage. Uh, okay. Okay, Demon Slayer is getting nerfed. Hmm. Oh well. I was thinking about maybe doing another, um, oh yeah, Jester, sorry, the patch, uh, I have to update that one, give me a second here. 
can just post it for you right now and then update the link after after that. All right. Um, yeah, this kind of doesn't doesn't make me want to play what healthy Phantasm Blades. I will probably play like if I were to play another Phantasm Blades build, I would probably do Cold Spellbreaker for that. Yo, Pew Square, thank you so much for the host, man. Much appreciated. Welcome everyone. How's your stream, man? How was your stream? And uh, hope you enjoyed reading the patch notes as much as I do. How are you doing? Buffing Korba set, are they? I mean, that's actually okay. I mean, I think Korba was not that good anymore. I'm fine with them buffing it. Like, Korba set was... Uh... And also, this is just for the 4-piece set, right? And then, like, 4-piece Korba was kind of bad. Um, like, even before Korba was not that OP anymore, you were using, like, 2-piece Korba and, like, two different daggers, right? And this is just for the full piece, or like for the full set. So I guess it's fine, yeah. I I, I think this is a good buff. I think it's actually fun. Um, yep, yeah, yeah. Kolba, man. Kolba is pretty fun to play. Kolba's Decapitator, um, reduce bleeding damage. <laughs> Who cares about the bleeding on Kolba anyways? Like, why do they even touch it? It's, this is just uh, thematic anyways. Alright, peace, girl. Have a good night. See you around. Thanks for the host again. Um, this is getting reduced cold damage. So I guess they're switching around some of the cold damage um, from like individual items towards the set, so that you're like they're kind of forcing you to use the set. But I mean, to be honest, the set was pretty bad compared to the two piece and like other items build. So yeah, I guess the 4-piece build got buffed, and the 2-piece and 2 other items build got nerfed, actually, a little bit. Lights Guardian set reduced lightning damage modifier for Stormbox to 150. Um, Alright, another nerf for uh, Vindicators, I guess. Demon Slayer def oh yeah, we had this before already. This got nerfed, I don't know why, but I guess... I guess it was kind of kind of strong, but oh well. Not gonna play it anytime soon. Inferno Knight's face guard uh, added 120 burn for judgment. All right, that's pretty nice. Burn uh, builds aren't like the best right now, so that's, that's good. Nature's Avenger increased HP regen to 50 percent. Okay. Wait, N Avenger is getting buffed, but I mean they're only buffing HP regeneration stuff here, right? Like mostly at least. I mean, this is like a streamlined buff that every 200 gets. That's kind of the same. I mean, this, this, is, a nut, this is a real buff, though. <clears throat> and the rest of the set is like... They try to make HP regeneration work with Avenger. And if, if HP regeneration is going to be good on any build, it's probably going to be good with the Avenger Warder, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, Pyran's Rumination set increased oil resistance reduction modifier for devastation to 26. That is pretty good. Like, the 26 is almost a good value. It's like at least a usable value, right? That's good. And uh, I mean, the set was pretty good for like, or like pretty OP for Shieldbreakers and a little bit worse for Sorcerers slash Templars. So, Arcanist side of things getting buffed is pretty nice. Mm, yeah, I I don't know why this was so high in the first place. I totally agree with the nerf here. So yeah, devastation burn gets increased. Basically, mortal trap damage gets uh, decreased, and resistance reduction modifiers for guardians of Pyrian get removed or reduced. That's kind of okay, I guess. Oh, this one gets more tanky though, like more frizzeras. Yeah, re yeah, like Pyrant Sorcerer seems very 
Juicy now as well. Right against 40, yeah, this set was very nice, but kinda needs uh, like a small buff, I think. 100% fire to acid modifier for sigil, and increased CDR to 1.5 seconds. Alright, that's pretty good. Sigil is like not the best at the moment, so yeah, seems good. This is gonna have like a new uh, spell effect as well, right? Because they're doing like new animations for sigil, like across the board. So we'll have like Acid Sigil here, Lightning Sigil and Trozen set, and like an improved Vitality Sigil as a base, I guess. It's pretty nice. Uh, plus 3 Ill Omen. Mm, I don't know about that, why would you use this? Alright, alright. Okay, you have like another debuff done here. That's pretty, pretty juicy actually. Pretty juicy. But yeah, weren't you mostly using this for like apostates, vitality apostates, or vitality deceivers? So you're using either this or this, I guess. Not both of them at the same time. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. So yeah, it's like all the Mark of Torment stuff switched over to Elomen. Alright, so it's like an Elomen. Aura of Sanjur and Sigil set, kinda now. Rage of Agrix, increased fire resistance reduction modifier for Siphon Source minus 20%. Oh, interesting. Fire Necro, though, I don't know about that. Except for like Blight Lord Oppressor. Increased Aether damage modifier for Vindictive Flame to 140. Okay, okay. Um. Alright, I guess it's a small buff for Aether Spellbinders. Mm, this one as well, probably, because you're not using this on Aether Spellbinders. Rot Guys set increased weapon damage modifier to Dreeks Evil Eye to 60%, increased acid damage for YS Mine to 180. Alright, nice buff for Acid Rot Guys. Increased bit damage for Dreeks to 33, yeah, that's kind of the same. Dreeks buff. They're buffing Dreeks Evil Eye across the board, that's kind of nice. I was hoping for this. CDR here, replace modifiers for Dreeks with 20% crit damage modifier, alright. Increase attack damage converted to health or promise strike to 8%. Alright, yeah, Rot Guys apparently wasn't the best set, so yeah, it got buffed. Seems good. Rune Binders gem. Um, yeah, the runes are in a kind of a bad state right now, so. Runes getting more love is uh, very welcome here as well. Sentinel of the 3, increased percent retail to attack, modifiers for counter strike and virus might to 12% and 24%. Uh, oh yeah, this set was garbage, right? So this one getting buffed is good as well. I don't know if it's, it's good or not. Like counter strike and virus might just don't seem like the spells that you want to use together with retaliation damage to added to attack, to be honest. Like, it's still not that optimal in my opinion. But, oh well. I guess if you want to play this type of build, then you can play it a little bit less worse now. A little bit less bad. <coughs> Dagos Craft set added more trauma for Amaras' Blade Burst. Alright. Like, obviously, this was gonna be fine for Warlords no matter what, because the Warlords are kinda busted. And, uh, this one has Elemental to Physical now. That's pretty nice together with Leviathan, right? I really want to try Targos with Leviathan. They remove damage debuff from Raven Sphere? Yeah, yeah, that's insane as well. Like, that's so good. Like, Arcanist will get, uh, like, get so many buffs in this patch. It's like insane. They actually teased that one already in the last livestream, by the way. Cyclone set, increased fire damage modifier for Thermite Mines to 220. I guess, whatever. This is fine. Corbin Dune Fiend. Alright, this is getting a lot of changes here. Blood Acid to Blood of Drieg. Less OA though. I don't know if this is, like, how much did it give before? Fifty flat. Hmm. Hmm. 
I mean, 22 flat asset is probably better though for I have Reckoning at least. Or probably for both builds. I don't like that they change commander aura from soldier appearance. It now shows only arrows pointing upwards. Oh dang. Hmm. Uh, so Dune Fiend's getting what? Pierce to acid instead of pierce to. No, no, instead of lightning to pierce conversion, is now had lightning to acid conversion. I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? I don't know why it had lightning to pierce in the first place. 75% damage modifier. Wait, what? 75% damage modifier modifiers for Shadow Strike. Alright, modifiers, modified the modifier, I guess. Uh, this is like a lot of damage, so Raynan, um, this is probably why your Shadow Strike is dealing so much more damage now than before. It's kinda intrusive now. Alright, that's kinda... He's bad, man. This is insane though, like, I don't know what this exactly is supposed to mean, but... This seems like an, a huge buff. Because I don't really, because he like, I guess this is multiplicative. Like seventy five percent multiplicative damage on Shadow Strike is insane. Like that's almost doubling your damage. Increase weapon damage modifier for Shadow Strike. All right, that's just weapon damage. But all right, all right, all right. Dude, after seeing this, I feel so much worse about uh, what's it called? Death marked, Death Guard. I mean. Death card already got this and that's it. And it still wasn't that good for Shadow Strike. And Yunfian got whole shit like this is insane, what the fuck? Um alright, Mage Slayer set. I'm using this one on my Ignafar right now, so increase dot elemental Increase Elemental dot my for flames of Ignafar to 80. Alright, alright. Small buff for the build I'm doing right now. And more casting speed on the arm guards, I guess. Nice, nice. So we're hitting 200% casting speed now without a problem. Alright, take care. Level. See you around, uh, hopefully, on Saturday. Have a good night. Venom Blade Pact uh, revised the set and its items with support. Oh, this one is for 2 and this one is for 3. Oh, this is the non method conversion, this is the method conversion, right? And this one has like support for bloody pox now on both of them, I guess. Alright, nice, nice. Void Soul set added 12 to 100 Chaos Damage modifier for Ignafar. Alright, yeah, it's still kind of a weird split between Chaos and Vitality though, right? It's a little bit... Hold on. Chosen set uh, getting 4% more physical resistance on the mantle. Very nice. This is the non-mythical version, by the way. I'm just gonna skip to the mythical one. Alright, so... More fizz rest, more HP, less cold resistance, which is kind of whatever. And oh yeah, and the set also adds Oculus support now. And it's gonna be support for um, the Sigil of Consumption. So you will have a cold Sigil of Consumption with Chosen set now. So you can either make a well, cold uh, Warlock or cold slash lightning. Uh, What's it called again? Conjurer, right? Um, Uzin's Infernal Avatar Reduced weapon damage modifier for Kenneth's rebound to 14% Alright, I mean, yeah, obviously they're only gonna nerf uh, Kenneth's rebound stuff when it comes to Uzin's stuff And they're not gonna touch my Granada Seems good Kenneth's rebound was, like, pretty OP though, to be Bulgur's Hunger added 6% attack damage converted to health. 100 wit. Oh, yeah, this one um, supports Sigil way better now as well, right? Alright, yeah, Sigil is getting like Sigil and Shadow Strike are getting so many buffs in this patch. And also Dreeks, even I like Sigil, Dreeks, and. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Sigil, Dreeks, Shadow Strike, and a little bit of Trozen are getting huge buffs. Alright, Coffin Spirit, 
Good night. See you around next time. Thanks for stopping by. Virtuous Light, reduced shield block damage to 15. Wait, why are they nerfing Virtue set? The fuck? Why? Wizard, Wizard, um, Wizard, Wizard? How do you even pronounce that? I don't know. Wizard of Octavius, removed Wizardus, alright. Octavius nerf, or a small at least. And some Void Soul stuff here. Wait, why is this not together with, uh, this one? Just because this is called the Void Soul, they don't put it here. Oh well. Updated conversion to elemental dealt, dealt as chaos. Alright, there are definitely streamlining this one more towards chaos now. Hopefully, probably. I don't know. I mean, not really though. And they're buffing Flames of Igna Far stuff. Increased chaos with RR on the Spickle proc to 15%. That's pretty nice. Epic items. Um. Alright, I'm not gonna gonna hover over them and see if anything of this is like important for endgame. But most of this is probably like good for either leveling or for like pre BIS things. So like well like once you are uh, in endgame but you're like a new player and you don't have stash. Then I mean basically this is like Alright, so most of this is removing Cold, lighting, and fire resistance, and instead of that, they gain elemental resistance. This is just uh, streamlining elemental resistance overall. Some of this gets like more aether resistance, even. Yeah, that's mostly it, right? The mythical ones are what? Um, no idea if this is what this does, even our anarchy, I don't know. Uh, elemental, like, yeah, this is just. Most of, most of this is just. Um, Resistance balancing, mostly elemental. Right, yeah, that's kind of whatever, right? Uh, living shadows, reduced bleed damage. All right, I mean, I didn't even use this one on my trickster, so we dodged that nerf. <laughs> uh, blade arc for soldier, normalized animation speed across all weapon groups. Previously, 200 melee was up to 20% faster than dual wield slash one handed. Wait, what? Alright, that's why one-handed was so terrible. How do I turn on auto loot? I mean, there should be an option in, uh, under options, probably. Passion of Arcanist? Yeah, yeah, Arcanist is so good now. Should I delete all my non-complete components? <laughs> oh yeah, because you can't use them anymore, right? <laughs> Uh, huh, that's a good question, like, pr probably you have to sell them. Or like, some of them. Like, not all of them, right? Like, at non-complete craftables you can sell, but non-complete non-craftables will still drop, right? It's just, like, the craftables that will be only complete now. But you can, like, go back to the last patch, like, and then craft so many that you have like only complete ones and then go up to the next one again. And, but I mean that's like not really worth the effort, right? Uh so yeah, class changes. Um yeah, we talked about Blade Arc. Demo, demo, canister bomb, reduced burn damage scaling with rank. Proof casing, reduced internal trauma scaling with rank, or it's a canister bomb nerf. We also dodged that one with our Bomberman because we were using Granado instead. Seems good. Flashbang increased base chance of confuse to 33%. Alright. I guess that's a buff. Because you don't really want to spend that many points on this. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of whatever, I guess. It's like better when you, when you only one point this and it's like the same if you don't. Like it's the same if you like soft cap this. Mortal trap getting nerfed a little bit. Alright. Big one. Um. Scales with rank now. This was very important. Like the good mortal traps, or like the good mortal trap builds right now, they didn't use the big one because the big one was actually not the big one, but it was the bad one. It was actually a DPS loss using this. So this hopefully doesn't make the big one useless anymore. Shattering blast increased internal drama, toma 
Talama, increased internal trauma damage, scaling with rank. Particularly at ultimate ranks. This is actually a buff for my Granada build then, I guess. Seems good. And yeah, Thermite Mines are being changed now. They are different than before. Similar to Inquisitor runes, so like instant cast. Vindictive Vinic Flame, increased HP regen, scaling with rank. Oh yeah, we should also actual test. Sigil of Consumption has more... Oh, it has Vitality Decay on, on top now. Uh, I guess. Alright. And Destruction has more fire damage scaling with rank, particularly at ultimate ranks. And added percent with damage. So yeah, Sigil gets a buff. Uh, Dreeks didn't get a buff here, but most of the Dreeks items got a buff, so... We will see if like the Dreeks buffs, like the item buffs to Dreeks are like enough to make Dreek good or not. Mm. I like the flip. Yeah, yeah, this is like whatever, right? Ozen's Wrath, increased base damage. Yeah, that's kind of kind of needed. It was kind of useless still, even though it had like life still now. Not Blade. Blade Burst increased Frost Burn damage scaling with rank. So they are finally like buffing the base skill, which was like kind of a one pointer even on Blade Burst builds, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty nice. Or a quick cut. Uh, I think like all of the Nightblade weapon pool skills are like not a DPS loss anymore now. So, you could so yeah, Lethal Assault, Reduced Acid, Cold, Flat. Okay. I mean, okay, I guess. Spam Phantasm Blades gets a nerf as well. Increase the like, damage penalty to 55%. How much was it before? 50%, alright, so 5%. Less damage. That's a... Uh, kind of a big nerf, kinda. Uh, but yeah, Shadow Strike got reduced cooldown. Increased weapon damage. To 385, holy shit, that's a lot. Nidalas, increased poison damage, alright. Yeah, this was kinda useless before, right? Mm, okay, okay, okay. I mean, oh no, that's Shadow Strike as well, like, this was not that useless, but that's a like, triple Shadow Strike buff here, basically. Radius scales with rank, that's interesting. Yeah, Shadow Strike seems like in a good spot, or like in a spot that should be tested as long, uh, at least. It's pretty great. Prime Strike reduced base energy cost by 10. I mean, okay, small buff. Thunderous Strike, um, same. No, wait. So base has. Hmm. That's like actually a nerf. This seems like another small power shift from spam promise strike to non-spam, right? When it comes to energy at least. Like spam promise strike is gonna need a little bit more energy and non-spam is gonna be needing less, I guess. Wait, but base is like, what, 10? By 10, so this is 22 instead of 32. And then it scales up to... Let me see here. It scales up to 130, and then 10 less, it's like almost 10%. So yeah, now in total, both spam and non-spam variants need less energy now, right? Like 10 less on this is like, uh, it's not quite 10% less, but it's like 8% less energy that you need in the base, and then... This reduces by 55 instead of 60, so it's kind of the same for spam and a little bit better for non-spam, I guess. Torrent increases lightning damage by 20, increases weapon damage by 18, reduces its scaling such that it returns the original value by 12. Alright, I mean, this is kind of buff for leveling, I guess, but like whatever for for endgame. When you go to to increase duration to 15 seconds, that's pretty nice. It's above. Reduce energy cost by 10. Also a buff for lower levels here. And more wet damage. Alright. Yeah, Wendigo Totem was in kind of a bad spot in my opinion. Like, it was not that good, so... Seeing this buff is also very nice. 
Arcanus, no, this is where like the juicy stuff comes in, right? Arcanus is getting so many buffs this patch, like insane. Arcan will increase HP threshold to 75%. It was 70% uh, before, right? I mean, that's just pretty good though. Like, it's gonna trigger a little bit faster than before. Yeah, it was 70% before. Uh, that's nice, but it's like the smallest buff that it's got here. Fabric of Reality added percent damage to Aetherius and Chthonians, removed energy leech. Um, yeah. That's racial damage right here for Arcanas, so that's uh, actually pretty nice. Discandra's added elemental damage to overload. Uh, added the elemental damage from overload, the percent. That's like whatever, that's not really a buff, but this one has more OA now. You can check that out in game right in a second here. Alright, I mean, Iskandra's got buff basically, like the, the line. Maven Sphere got buffed, it has no more damage penalty. Um, conversion has slow resistance scaling, just as high as the other resistances, like the other CC resistances, that's pretty nice. Mental Alacrity has more energy, right, than before, and also more cost speed for ultimate ranks at least. Nice. Reckless Power has more Aether damage, more flat Aether damage, that's also pretty good. Chance of Sun Retail, which is like whatever. Inquisitor, Infernal Purge, increased percent crit damage, scaling with rank to 50% by 12, 70% by ultimate rank. Uh, another buff to um, Flames of Ignafar, right? And a small buff to Hagarad, finally. They reduced the shotgun damage penalty by 25, or like 225. What was it before? That They didn't even say that before, like, did they even add that in the tooltip here? Oh yeah, 30%. So that I buffed that by like 5%, by like a little bit more than 5% actually. Um, it's like 7% buff, right? For like all other projectiles except for the first one. Arbiter of Souls added flat vitality damage, I guess. That's very nice, actually. This is a buff for my Ritualist, for example. Ascension reduced percent all damage to match the retail damage on Oathkeeper. Alright, Fizz Badman, Oathkeeper nerf here. Uh, how much is it? Is, is it a high nerf or like a, a big nerf? Or? Ah, uh, 35%. I guess it's not that high. Ah, uh, it's, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal, to be honest. Celestial Presence reduced radius scaling with rank to 4.0 by rank 12, 4.5 by max def ultimate rank. And what is this? Oh, this one. Five point six, and we had what at soft cap four point six. So point six nerf here, and like point seven. No, what was it? Yeah, no, when one point five, one point five nerf for max. I mean, all right, that's not that terrible. It's, I guess it's fine. But yeah, this reduction is eh. okay. This is a nerf, five percent, right? Yeah, 5% for max and for soft cap. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. It was a little strong though, but I guess, yeah. Mm. A reckoning reduced again? Oh, dang. This is, uh... They did this already once. It's a fizz bad man. 